Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, I'm feeling a little uh, cold. Is the air conditioning a little too strong? It is, or I thought I was a little nervous. Or uh, maybe another reason for me feeling cold is my surface area of exposure is high. But uh, by the way, it's by design, not by default. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to talk about uh, two things. Uh, mostly from my experience with uh, students and startups, a small correction in the introduction. The Center of Innovation and Incubation uh, and Enterprise is at IIM Ahmedabad, not at uh, IIM uh, as I think I missed it there. So, yeah, I'm going to talk about, uh, I do a little bit of consulting and uh, I do a lot of teaching and uh, nurturing of startups. Uh, I'm not going to talk about my experience with uh, Corporate India, because uh, I honestly feel Corporate India doesn't really want to change. Uh, they're happy with building efficiencies rather than uh, building innovative products. Uh, tell me which uh, uh, Indian company has uh, really created a product of its own. We are proud to say that we are the back end of the world, but at the same time we should be sorry about the fact that we are just the back end, the clerks of the entire world. Uh, so with that, I'm going to focus on uh, talking about uh, experiences with students and startups. Uh, it's going to be in two parts. First, uh, the first part is going to be about how uh, everybody like us, you and I, uh, with a little bit of curiosity, with a little bit of observation, can become innovators. And the second part uh, is going to be about uh, my take on education, how it should be and how it should not be. All right? So the first uh, bit is about uh, an eye for innovation. That's the theme that was given to me. So I've tried to build uh, uh, my experiences into around that theme. Yeah. Now I want, to, uh, want you to see some uh, pictures that I'm going to show you. Uh, is it clear? Uh, it's a uh, rear, uh, it's a side view mirror of a car, completely useless in one school when it rains. This function. Same mirror, completely dysfunctional in humid weather. Air conditioning is on, it's dysfunctional. This is the air conditioning console of the same car. Now I don't understand why there are two buttons, one for the on button and one for the off button. I just don't understand why. Uh, can you guess what that is? What is it? Uh, it's the same damn console in the dark. Now, I want to change the temperature of the car. Uh, should I drive and look at the road or should I fidget around with this console? If I want to put the air conditioning off, what do I do? I can't see the button. I mean, a simple thing, why can't it be a battery display? I mean, does a Japanese manufacturer need to be taught to do this? They just don't probably put themselves in your shoes and figure the product out. That's a problem, right? Now, uh, note that all these four pictures have been taken from the same point from the driver's eye view. Same point, okay? Now, if I had more than 20 minutes, we could have taken 50 more pictures of things inside the car and we would have come up with 50 different possibilities of upgradation of products. That's the point that I'm trying to make. Observe carefully. You will find enough opportunities everywhere and everywhere just to bring about a difference in our lives and make our life better. Right now, from the car, uh, let's go to a place where we visit every single day. Uh, we sit there, uh, some, uh, I think Preeti in the morning talked about incubation. A lot of thought happens in this place, right? At least for me, I have a bookshelf in the uh, So, what, you go there, plonk, and there's a splash. Yeah? And it has been happening for years. So bombs have getting, been getting dirty because of their splash. For I'm 45 years old, I was probably tolerated at my age of 3. So for 42 years, I've been tolerating that every day. And this was probably invented 42 years earlier. So for 84 years, there has been no change. We've been silently suffering that splash of the dirty water on the backside every single day. Right? Why doesn't it change? Now, all of us have these uh, peeves. All, all the time, right? What do we do about it? Frustration, right? Anguish. 
And what I call them as pain points. Uh, my philosophy says that these pain points are uh, tomorrow's opportunities. What do you guys think? If we can actually observe these things and document them in some careful manner, I'm sure each one of us can come up with some new stuff, some interesting products, some interesting services. Do you agree with me? Uh, now, with that philosophy, uh, when I started, uh, uh, I got into academics uh, about six years back. I, uh, the advantage of academics is that uh, you can talk without uh, performing, right? Uh, and that's what I've been doing for the last six years. Uh, it's easy to talk. Uh, and uh, you get uh, a bunch of uh, maybe 60, 80 students sitting in front of you, uh, ready to do any assignment that you give them, right? So, this kind of a hobby of mine of just observing things and noting it down in a small pocket diary, I thought uh, I'll try to rub it off onto the students. So that's where the entire journey began. And uh, it started off by a very simple thing. Uh, I take a course uh, on uh, innovation, design related stuff, etc. And it goes on for about 11 12 weeks. Uh, what we started doing at that time was uh, pick up a sector every single week and give the students a brief that go out in the field for that week, talk to people, interview people, observe people in that, users in that sector and come back with just 10 pain points that customers feel and experience in that particular sector. So for example, this week we take uh, mobile phones as a, as a, as a product. Next week, we take uh, banking uh, systems, uh, banking processes uh, as a product. The third week, we take insurance services as a product. Fourth week, we could take maybe uh, apparel retail as a product. And you know, like that, for 11 weeks, 60 students go, going out of the field, collecting 10 pain points every week. We have 600 per week. At the end of the trimester, we have a bunch of 6,600 pain points collected across 11 different sectors. Right? Now, initially, uh, students used to submit all that stuff in Excel sheets, and uh, as my hobby is, I would sit down and uh, you know go through each of those Excel sheets, cut and paste interesting ones, and create another Excel sheet as a repository for uh, new ideas, new uh, products, etc. And uh, then we got the IT team of the college uh, where uh, I uh, am a professor right now, Velikar Institute of Management to kind of create some, a simple online portal which had some data mining uh, facilities, etc. And uh, at the end, in two years, we collected 56,461 pain points across 23 different sectors. Now, what is this? This is a gold mine for uh, future innovations and future uh, uh, upgradations of products. Now, uh, some samples I will uh, show you here. Uh, this is a, a senior citizen trying to read the text on a mobile phone. Regular problem that we face. One student called Mayuri Ramade in the 2007-2009 batch came up with this kind of solution. A simple software patch, if you can just feed in your spectacle powers there, the font automatically gets adjusted. What does it take to do this? Just pure observation and some some simple coding skills, right? Another problem. Expensive jewelry looks great, but can get stolen too. Some students came up with uh, this. <laughs> if you if if that diamond set costs maybe 15, 20 lakhs, a small three to five thousand rupee embedded GPS tracker in that somewhere. Do it or not do it? I mean, these are not my ideas, right? These are students who have come up with these kinds of ideas. And uh, now, with all this happening, uh, in, in a matter of two years, in 2008, 2010, this happened. And uh, what I noticed is that uh, the great point took over in the campus. Uh, when I would walk through college lobbies, or when I would walk through the college canteen, cafeteria, etc., I could hear people talking about, oh, this is something I observed here, can I do something different? Why doesn't this company do this this way? Why doesn't this, that company do it this way, etc, etc, etc. So, 
Uh, what actually happened there was uh, students were getting more curious, students were becoming better observers, and most importantly, there was a discussion going on around the, the campus. That's something very important. There are big words used for this co-creation and co-collaboration and things like that. But it's nothing, it's just getting a discussion going. Being curious, observing keenly and getting a discussion going. Now, with this platform, uh, uh, what I thought with this, this understanding, what uh, we came to a conclusion that all these discussions that were happening around the campus, they were very transient in nature. Because uh, it, was, it used to be from one mind to the other, or maybe from two, three minds coming together and talking. But how does one really, you know, store it, document it for posterity? That's something which is important. That's, that's something which can be dipped into later. And that's where the, uh, the concept of a social networking portal around consumer pain points came to me. Uh, it's called brandabrand.com. You can visit that and have a look. Now, uh, what happens here is uh, people, users come, post their pain points, post their first experience about a product, post, post their last experience about a product, post their aspirations about a product, what a brand should be, what a product should be. Uh, maybe talk about their recent purchases, etc. Then uh, they perform groups, online focus group discussions. A lot of discussion happens on these forums, which gives out what people really want from products and services, what people are complaining about products and services, what are the peeves that people have about different products and services. And uh, all this can be mined at the back, back end. What sectors are people talking about? The most talked about sectors. Which brands are most being most talked about? In different categories, which are the brands that are being most talked about? Amongst the brands, you can compare the brands. Say this is a comparison between a number one service provider and a number three service provider. The brands have been deliberately eliminated from this. Uh, the kinds of things that people are talking about uh, service provider number three, somebody's talking about people are talking about billing complaints, customer care, marketing scripts, spam, etc. The, about the other brand, something else is being spoken about. Sentiment analysis about those uh, products that people are talking about. So, this, this is kind of a thing which started off, off as a hobby has now kind of uh, culminated, not culminated, now has grown into a, a completely open source platform where students can dig into for new product ideas, startups can dig into new product ideas, corporates can come and have a look at what people are talking about, how can they improve their products and services, governments can come and uh, look into it, how can they improve their service offerings, etc, etc, etc. So, uh, basically, what I'm saying is, with these kinds of three things, being curious, being observant, and getting a discussion going, I think all of us can have an eye for innovation. That's uh, the first part of my talk. And uh, now something uh, more close to my heart, that is how education should be, and how education should not be. Right? Now I'm going to leave that uh, uh, word in mind. Exploring 
Now, uh, when this exploration is happening, uh, suddenly it presses this button and uh, the slide moves back. What's the reaction of the child? A little up. It, it sees something happening and probably repeats it, right? So at that point in time, what is the child? What has happened to the child in the mind? It has made some meaning out of this activity, right? So that exploration leads to making meaning. Yeah, all of you with me? Uh, yeah, remember I'm a professor, so <laughs> if you don't respond, I feel you are either asleep, 3.30 anyway is, is time uh, not to conduct sessions. Alright, so it's, it's making meaning, right? And now, uh, what's the expression on the child's face when something new it discovers? Smile, it's ecstasy, it's, I think it's beyond ecstasy, it's like uh, something that can be described, something that you explore and make a meaning for yourself, it's like unbounded glee, right? unbounded joy, glee. So I will just put it down there. And uh, now the child becomes, uh, imagine the child becomes aware of your presence. What would it do? What does it do next? That it has made meaning. Now what does it do? Yeah, tries to come to you and remember the child can't speak, okay? So it's coming and then showing something like that, right? It does that. It shows what it has discovered. So the next process that is happening is uh, sharing. Right? It, it wants to share its newfound knowledge. Correct? Now, there are two kinds of responses that you as the observer can give. One is, uh, you look at it and say, wow, oh, that's something great. Yeah, that's, that's positive reinforcement. That's positive reinforcement. And if you give positive reinforcement to the child, the child goes back into that loop of exploration again. But if you give negative reinforcement and say, oh, I'm in a hurry, sorry. It's not supposed to do this. It's, it's a pointer, it's not a slide, it's sorter. What happens to the child? Negative reinforcement? Probably, uh, we have tried to make a different meaning in class of something that a teacher has told you. What, is, what has it resulted in? The teacher taught you something. And you interpreted it something differently and you wrote it in that way in the exams. What did you get at that time? A big fat zero. That's what current education is doing. You tried it again the next time. You tried raising your hand in class and said, Ma'am, this is what I think it is. What were you told? Shut up. This is not what it is. The 21 test papers don't, don't subscribe to this finding. The moderate, uh, whatever, the sample, ideal question, ideal answer sheet should not have this X, X, Y, Z, right? So what happened to you? You kept trying and then at a point you gave up, right? So you ended, that led to boredom. And all of us got sick of getting educated, going to school. And we ended up as a bunch of bored graduates. What do you think? You guys are graduates, yeah? Or not yet? But uh, that's what happens to us, right? So that's what negative reinforcement does. But that positive reinforcement, what it does is, it puts that child into another loop of exploration, making another meaning, sharing with more people, and it's an ever-expanding loop. And as an educator, I think it's our duty to put the student into that ever-expanding loop of self-learning. Which is what education is not doing. I mean, if I can put a student into a zone of self-learning, I am just an observer at the end of the day. And I have to just become a facilitator. And that fellow is going to just take off on a self-learning loop and get educated and do a lot of good things in life. That's what my take on education is. Uh, that's it. Thanks.